thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. So uh, how are you? How are things with at the moment? I- I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm very good. Uh, cool. Uh, listening Just... to the new album, Soul Revolution, which is coming out uh, on Friday. Uh, fantastic stuff yeah, as always. Um, what, what are your okay. thoughts on the new songs? Uh, you know, I was very nervous, you know, and I've been telling people that because it, it's very different from what we've done. It, it You can still tell it's, it's fire from the gods, sure. but it is, you know, it isn't this super heavy metal record, metal driven record. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I think, you know, someone had said something about like pop rock or whatever, but which is cool. I don't, I don't care about labels, mm. but the fact is it's different and it's a different aspect of the band. And we haven't forgotten who we are. So I don't ever want people to think that we just, you know, so I was a little nervous at how people would take it. But thus far, the reaction has been really cool. Uh, And that sort of uh, different direction with uh, these new songs, was that an intentional effort from you guys to kind of go in that direction? Or was it kind of a natural sort of thing? There were aspects of it where we were like, yo, we want to write these type of songs. Mm. (laughs) Excuse me. Where we wanted to write these type of songs as opposed to those type of songs, right? We, yeah. we wanted to reach a wider o- audience, but I wasn't trying to say, oh, I want mainstream appeal. I just wanted to break through the mainstream, but, but, but on my own terms. And I think I wanted to do it in a form that was very indicative of who we are as a band, you know? So still keep some of the, the bounce, the hip hop aesthetic, you know, there aren't that many screams or, or very super heavy parts, but there, mm. there are some, and we just wanted to kind of litter the record with it and touch on it. But also, the, soul, the song's called Soul Revolution, so it's definitely going to have a little bit more of emotion than, yeah. than the uh, or softer emotion, so to speak, you know? Um, was this sort of um, uh, any kind of a reaction to the previous album, American Sun? Because that album did fairly well was received quite well um so was this sort of a a reaction like to to sort of go away from that a little bit or no we were just wanted we kind of just picked up where we left off i think we were all we were in a place where let let me put it this way if we had written that record if we were writing the record now it would be very different as opposed Mm -hmm. to what we were right what we wrote you know because remember we did this in the backdrop of covid There was a lot going on in my life. You know, um, I hadn't been on the road a lot. So I was coming from a place of this is how I'm feeling. This is where my voice is. Mm. This is where my fit, you know, Richie and the other writers, you know, this is where we are. And we wanted to write songs because we saw how well received uh, the song right now was. We saw how well received songs like American Sun were. So we wanted to kind of double down on that, that kind of stuff a little bit and just see if we could get a little bit of wider appeal, but still do what we do, which is write nice, bouncy songs, you know, uh, groove-oriented is, songs. Is that um, difficult to kind of retain, uh, you know, a somewhat signature sound that you guys have at all? Or is do you feel that it's quite organic to kind of just play what you kind of feel? One thousand percent. It's just it's got to be organic how and play what we feel. We've always been that kind of bad mm. play what we feel, you know. And but th- it's hard to escape the natural uh, progression and evolution. You know, it's hard to escape the evolution of a band when there's so much going on musically and there's so much art to consume that you want to com- you conform a little bit. You do, you know, and you change and you you start to re- realize that. Oh, I like how this sounds, and I re- I like the way that I sound when I do this and that kind of stuff. And then you just kind of put it together and try and write the best songs you can. Yeah, man, that's all you can do as an artist, right? Is to kind of just do what you can and and then put it out there and, and see what you get. And you know, fingers crossed that you know the fans out there like it. Yes, very much so. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot happening in the world, uh, obviously the last couple of years and you, you sort of touched on this sort of, you know, writing this and stuff during the, the COVID pandemic. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, what was really inspiring you, um, you know, as far as world events or was it really more of a personal thing that kind of was inspiring you? It was my reaction to what was happening in the world. And that's, I've always written from that point of view. Narrative was that kind of point of view, like as a black man growing up in, in the Western world and Western societies and, and how was I supposed to, how did I react mm. to feeling 
who, who where I was. I was in a very difficult spot, you know, like, you know, do you lose a bit of yourself? You know, do the politics dominate? When politics dominates every, almost every as aspect of your life, which it started to do over the last five or six, almost 10 years of our lives, mm -hmm. politics have played such a huge part in the way we behave, you know, uh, how do I react? And the reason why, you know, soul revolution, where the idea of a soul revolution came from was that I don't want to stoke the, 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 the fires of political revolution. I don't want people out there bossing guns for some sort of political, for some sort of political stance or some sort of ideal. I want people to stand up and say, we need to change. And if, and if the world's got to change, we've got to change. And hence the reason the soul revolution. You know, so I, res I was, it was my response to what I was seeing in the world and what I was going through. Yeah. And, and obviously as a collective unit around the world, we were all sort of going through something, I guess, you know, it's one of the few times in that we were sort of sharing the same thing, but um, do you kind of feel like there was too much negativity going on around the world? 1000%. I feel like people, I feel like people were responding to the negativity in a, in a way where it was starting to just dominate the whole the conversation everywhere people came from. So every stance that everyone had, it never came from a place of change or a positive change. It was always, I don't like you, so therefore I'm going to tell you why I don't like you. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is how we're supposed to live. You know, like, that's crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. You know, people, people liked Trump, you know, for what he, for some of the, people liked him for some of the things he did to people they didn't like. You know, because he, was, he wasn't afraid to say things about people he didn't like. And when you start to utilize, use that as a platform as to how you rally people around yourself, it's kind of fucked up, man. Mm, yeah. Uh, but I guess the, one of the advantages of, uh, you know, someone like yourself, for example, in, in the music industry, is you kind of have a platform to kind of go the other way and sort of say, well, this is what's really happening and this is what's really like and stuff. I mean, do you kind of like to take advantage of, of having this platform in the music world to sort of like, you know, have a voice, so, so to speak? Yeah, I like, I want to, um, I typically want to say things that matter, you know? Mm. And I know a lot of people don't really care about that and that's okay. You know, do what makes you feel good. But what I wanted to do was say things that meant something to people. So if I have this platform and people are digging my band, I'm going to say that. I'm going to do that, you know? I'm going to utilize the platform to say those things and to try and help people change and to just, you know, um, be uplifting. You, you feel me? Yeah, definitely. I think we, we need more of that for sure, you know, because like we mentioned before, there's been so much negativity going on around the world that there's more, there's just not enough positive things going on. So we need voices yeah, exactly. to sort of like say more positive stuff for sure. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, uh, obviously the touring thing was one of the major parts that got affected with the, the pandemic. Uh, how did you guys kind of deal with all that stuff? You know, the, the, uh, the, the most difficult aspect of it was being the most difficult aspect of it was trying to live your life, which you've lived for so long and trying to because we, that was the first time I'd been home off the road for, for say, an extended amount of time. So I didn't know how to live at, at, for, for a bit. I was kind of freaking out a little bit. Like, am I ever going to do this again? This is what I've worked so hard for. This yeah. is what I wanted to do. Where, where's it, when's it going to happen? And every day it's getting worse. Oh, you know, so <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it was, it was, it was, it was panicky, bro. We were panicking for a little bit. I was personally, and I'm not, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a scary sort of time because we we really we never really knew what where we was going. But um, it did, I mean, a lot of people sort of like sat down and, and you know wrote music or they kind of took up a new hobby. Or I mean, was there anything in in particular that you kind of um did yourself? Uh, you know, I tried to do a lot of things that were conducive to starting a business or being you know that kind of stuff I, mm. I i did i didn't pick up too many more hobbies i mean i sat around and watched a shit ton of television mm, yeah. and smoked a shit ton of weed <laughs> i made a baby oh, <laughs> you there know, you go. Yeah. There was a lot of that shit yeah you know yeah there was a lot of that 
that's a full time job right there. I know myself because I've got a, a young boy myself. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> um, that you just came off the road recently with um, Megadeth and Five Finger Death Punch, right? Yeah, bro. And, and the Who, man, we killed it. It was a crazy, uh, crazy tour, bro. I mean, working with Dave Mustaine every day, and you know, that was <laughs> our third Five Finger tour. So, we were very familiar with those camps. Yeah. Our second tour, we that was our second tour and with the who so we were very familiar with them but um dave mustaine bro you know that's one of the, the legends that that guy made metal cool you know he's the riff lord you know yeah. that's the guy and so working with that dude every day was um was incredible you know it, it was it was all inspiring and the guy was in the 60s still doing it you know so i, I want to be in my 60s still doing it and he, <laughs> he had cancer you know he had cancer at one yeah. point and now he's 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 in remission and he's still out there ripping dude it, it's it's dope yeah yeah it, 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 def it definitely is you know obviously he's a controversial figure but at the same time he's, he's hugely inspiring because he's done so much and achieved so much and uh, obviously influenced so many people as well i mean uh growing up you know yourself you know who was like sort of your one of your main influences uh musically speaking Man, I had so many because I, I listened to so much music and there was a lot of music around me. I have so, so much music in my family. Mm. So, you know, one of the big ones I used to listen to, I listened to Miles Davis and Nina Simone, jazz and blues artists yeah. were big in my family. Um, I listened to a ton of Bob Marley and a ton of culture and reggae roots music. And um, I listened to a lot of dancehall, bounty killer. I listened to so much hip hop. So... But for me personally, personally, uh, 50 Cent, DMX, um, Maynard Keenan James, th those are the guys that kind of, Corey Taylor, those mm -hmm. are the guys that, that really meant something to me because it was saying exactly what I was feeling. Yeah. You know, Zach De La Roca. Zach De La Roca was saying everything I was feeling politically and the way I was feeling, um, the way I, I was feeling as a, as a youth that was really involved in, I wasn't involved in politics, but I was raised extremely political because I'm a black man in America. Mm -hmm. There is no way escaping that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I can't escape the politics that surround my very existence. But um, so I was, uh, I, it, it was, it was, it was, it was something else, man. It was something else, bro. You know, like the the, the people that I looked up to, those those guys really impressed me. But those like those few. Um, so, uh, just on the touring side of things, um, is there any talks of, uh, you guys possibly coming down to Australia at all in the future? Bro, that's the plan, man. Like, I really want to come out there. We haven't been to Oz yet. People are crying for it, you know? And, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn and say, yo, we need to take Australia by storm because that ain't happening. <laughs> but we need to just get down there and rip some gigs, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I really... So many, so many of my friends and so many of the bands that I love have been down there. Like, I want to go to Oz, bro, for sure. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to get in touch with some promoters and get the word out there then for sure. Yes, brother. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, look, congratulations on the new album. Uh, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it, man. And uh, it's been I an absolute uh, pleasure bro. chatting to you today. Respect to the fullest, man. You take care.